I'm Heinbach. It's good to have you back. What you just heard is one of the most audacious multi-effects that I've ever seen. The Dust Collector by Fine Gear. <laughs> Feingear endorsed me with this to use it in my music, but I found it so bold and beautiful that I thought I would make a review video. So thank you Feingear for sending me this. <laughs> This is an analog effects unit, similar to the style of the 1970s multi-effects that packed a lot of functions in one rack unit. Except it's in this huge, huge box. For each effect, the dust collector has separate in and outputs. There is no master input. This way, you can use each effect separately. Say, have the delay only on the drums and the phaser only on the roads. This has its up and down sides, and I'll address this and other quirks of the machine at the end of this video. First, let's have a look at the functions. Starting from the left, you've got two low frequency oscillators with different ranges. And they can be CV influenced, so you can cross modulate them. They go up to 25 Hz, which is not that fast. So these are really low frequency oscillators. And these can be used to modulate all kinds of effects from the VCA on the spring reverb to the delay time to the phaser modulation. And this is very handy to have. Adding CV to anything opens it up for so many new possibilities, as you can interpatch it with a modular synthesizer or route audio there and do audio rate manipulation. A lot of good stuff happens with control voltage. Next up, we've got two analog tape emulators, which are diode based. In the manual, it says you can switch out the diodes to get different effects. You've got five overdrive settings for each. Let's see it with the TR606. As you can hear, these effects are quite subtle, which I like, because tape is subtle. It's not this overblown effect that I hear so often. It's something that just adds yeah, a nice shape to the audio signal. But you can get a bit more pointed effect by routing tape one into tape two. So let's do that.
Next, we've got a spring reverb, which you can also see here. And you can unscrew this and play with it directly, which is, of course, always nice. So let's get these screws out. And I just see, I put it. Oh, and here's still some tape because I played with it. spring we work we can add LFO modulations for the input and the output VCA let's patch the control voltage to the output As you could hear, the spring reverb does sound rather nice. Let's move on to the delay and here we've got an old friend. It's the PT2399 chip. I have seen so many units use this. The latest one was the feedback machine by the Human Comparator, which had two of these in the nastiest, grimiest possible setting. Here the delay is tuned to sound as good as possible which makes it rather dark, yet it still retains some of the crunch of the original. Also add control voltage. This delay makes this such a dub machine to play with. And the next effect adds to that, because that's built upon the Mutron biphase phaser. And that's, yeah, the phaser that's in here.
this phaser can be influenced by light. So there's a little door here that you can open and then you can shine light in there and modulate it. This is something I will do later. But let's hear it all together. GR606 goes into tape, then into the delay, then into spring reverb and the spring reverb goes into the phaser. And we can adjust the mix on all of these. Oh, this is so much fun. Having all these inputs for control voltage means that you can time the effects with a modular synthesizer or a semi-modular, such as this no-cost here. <laughs> the amount of fun with this is just too much. I mean, the sound with the just one synthesizer and this is beautiful. I haven't tried the light modulation. I'm gonna grab a flashlight. Oh, my God. 
as you could hopefully hear, the sound quality of the dust collector is rather nice. It's not a dirt machine, it's rather a very pleasant machine. The playability of this is great. You've got enough space so you're not accidentally moving buttons. You've got the springy work and you've got the light here. So there's a lot you can do with this that's very hands-on and it encourages a style of playing the effects which I personally enjoy a lot. But there are some things that are yeah, a bit difficult about this and that is first of all the size and the format. I mean, it is both a plus and it's a downer. And I think many people won't have the space to have this on the table. I mean, if I want to use this with anything here in this side of the studio, I don't have space. So it will either be off camera or yeah, I have to run long cables and it's not practical in any regard. This demands to be your centerpiece, be it in a live setup or in a studio. When I first got this, I was wondering what kind of mad person would design this. And then I looked at the website of Fine Gear and realized, oh, they designed their own modular mixing consoles. If that is your business, you think differently in regards to size. And it makes total sense to have something like this next to a mixer and use this basically for dub playing and dub mixing and have all the outs routed to a patch bay so you can easily switch them in and out. For desktop use, I really wish this had a little patch bay where you can reroute all the effects that would have made it so playable. For desktop use now, I use the Mesh by Shirality Audio, which is the prototype of their patch bay. This patch bay is meant for guitar pedals, but it's easy to wire up all the outs and then use this Eurorack kind of style of interface to interpatch everything. Though it's another pretty big box. <laughs> But I think for a live act, this makes total sense. It would allow you to create all kinds of wild routings easily. One more thing that's a bit sad is that the LFOs are really only LFOs. I wish one of these could go up to audio rate because yeah, then this would be almost a full-fledged synthesizer in itself. And audio rate modulation of everything is a beautiful thing. The big question for me is, is this something that I can fit in my studio? I really want to use this, but it requires so much space that I'm going to give it a shot and see if I can fit it next to the mixer. I did find a space for it, right underneath my laptop here. I'll have to use my RME remote somewhere, I have to stick it here, which should be easy. And I still got a place for the Atom controller for live streaming. So that works fine. It is getting cozy here, but this is close by now and it sits on a subgroup so I can easily access it. I would have been very sad if I couldn't have made it fit because I think this is something that I was missing effects wise on the desk and now it's here and let's make some music
Well, that is the dust collector. I'm happy that I found a place in my studio where it doesn't collect dust. And it does enhance what I can do with the mixing board, which is something that I love. So this is a keeper, yeah, which I'm so happy about. The price of this is also very nice. It's sub 500 euro. I can heartily recommend it if you got the space and yeah, you need something like this, which is a fun analog effect section. And it's non-vintage, so yeah, there's not much risk of it failing or giving you other kinds of trouble. So I'll be putting up this track and a bunch of sounds from this video on the Patreon. Thanks to everybody who supports what I do there. You are the reason I can keep on making these videos. Thanks to Fine Gear for sending me this. I'm really looking forward to the other effects in this series that will come in the future. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, do leave in the comments below or visit the subreddit. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye.